welcome to my new podcast called Innovation. Innovation was inspired by my previous podcast, Silence, where over the course of two years, I spoke weekly with 100 women from science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or STEM. The women I interviewed were absolutely incredible. They had jobs at Facebook or were astronauts at NASA and, you know, were doing some really, really cool things. But yet, I always kept my guests anonymous so that they could talk openly and honestly about their lives. And they really did. We discussed their experiences, what they've learned along their life journeys, and their hopes and ideas for living fulfilling and contented lives. The women truly were amazing and inspiring. And the conversations on silence were always so raw and transparent and surprisingly not just about STEM, but about everything. The topics that tended to come up are also the same topics that I discuss with my mentees or my friends or people ask me about after I've given a talk in schools and colleges. So I thought rather than keep these topics closed and just between people I've met, how about throwing them out into the world and letting everyone engage in issues that are clearly important to most of us. So I've sifted through all the episodes of Silence to bring you my favourite sound bites on very specific topics. Each week on Innovation, I'll be reflecting on the talking points to these topics. They're actually more like pearls of wisdom that I've found particularly provoking, inspiring and empowering. And I hope that they resonate with you too. This week is all about stereotypes. So first off, what exactly is a stereotype? If you look it up in the dictionary, one definition is that it's a widely held but fixed and oversimplified image or idea of a particular type of person or thing. And for my guests on silence, a lot of the times the word stereotype came up because as women in typically male-dominated fields, they were always being stereotyped for a variety of different reasons, whether that was because of the way they looked or the fact that they were women and shouldn't be there because it was a male-dominated world. You know, a lot of my guests were frustrated at being stereotyped but also we talked about where it came from and what my first guest from episode 44 talks about is how stereotyping starts from young. I think the media propagates some stereotypes so the pinks and the blues mm. and whatnot you know start and very quickly, uh, young children get segregated with their toys, girls with their dolls, and boys with their cars, and so on. It is true that stereotyping starts really early. And if you go to a toy store and you walk down the aisles, it's so clear that there are certain types of toys for boys and certain types of toys for girls, and certain colours that are associated with girls, like pinks, and blues for boys and I don't know where we are with that today uh, because I don't have young kids but certainly guests on my podcast talk about how it was so clear from a very early age that the things that we were given to entertain us were of a certain nature and the stereotyping just continued from there. My next guest from episode five talks about her experiences of being stereotyped. Uh, something that I've been conscious of is like, so I'm blonde and I have gotten the stereotype that I'm stupid, which is the only thing I've ever been conscious of, um, is that my teachers would just automatically assume that I was stupid and would actually talk to me like I was stupid until like I proved myself. I have no idea what it's like to be blonde, but the idea that the colour of your hair makes people assume how smart you are must be really, really tough. And I've definitely had my own fair share of that, being a woman of colour. Because I think, you know, the colour of your skin can make people assume that you are a certain way. And, you know, everything is basically skin deep. And I think that's just so sad because... 
anyone that gives it any thought would just think that's absolutely absurd that you can judge someone's intelligence by the way they look on the outside. And, you know, I think it's a sign of our society that we can judge at face value. I can tell you from my own experiences that I've met the most incredible people that didn't look, didn't do what was said on the tin, if you know what I mean. So their external packaging was in no way a representation of what they were as people from within. And I've always been deeply fascinated by that. I absolutely love meeting people who have unusual skills and talents or maybe really conventional talents, but then look completely different to the stereotypes that that might conjure up. And that's all really well and good, you know, if you are not the kind of person that people assume you to be. I think it can be really refreshing, it can be really positive, it can be really inspiring. But I think people who are stereotyped can actually get quite down with this constant assumption that people think they know who they are just by the way they look. My guest from episode 27 talks about this. A lot of people didn't think I was that smart because I was a girl and also for some reason because I had blonde hair. That was a that was the stereotype in middle school. And and so I was told a lot of the times that like I wasn't smart enough and they didn't believe me that I was smart. So so I was I did have a difficulty believing that I could even get into the STEM field at some points. Mm. But as I went to high school, I went to an all girl school for the first two years of high school. And that's really where I was able to see myself in a STEM field because I was around all these women that were having the same experiences and that were so encouraging. And there were no guys there to tell me that I couldn't do it. Um, and it was really support. It was like a supporting environment and everything. So. It kind of gives me chills, the idea that this blonde lady would never have pursued a career in STEM, which is what she felt in her heart she wanted to do, based on the fact that she had blonde hair. And to me, listening to her really made me realise that the messages we convey to people based on our assumptions uh, can really affect others. And... I think it's good to be aware that, you know, the assumptions we make of others can really hurt people. Um, and so it's kind of, you know, the lesson I take away from that is it's really important to be open minded and give people a chance. But I think we're living in a world where everything is just so superficial. And I'd love society to change to a point where we actually care about what's on the inside of people you know what they're able to give from within because I really truly believe that everyone has unique gifts and talents and it's a question of finding out what those gifts and talents are by turning inwards and getting to know yourself but I think we live in a world where everything is so pressurized to give this kind of impression, outward impression, that we are a certain way, as if wearing masks or having a facade or kind of wearing a costume. And I hope that we start to see the value or we put more emphasis on the value of what lies underneath the mask because... In my experience, what lies underneath the mask is so much more fascinating and unusual and inspiring compared to trying to fit yourself into this cookie cut mould of what everybody else looks like or conforming to the stereotypes or feeling the pressure to be like everybody else. My guest from episode 27 talks about 
how less pressurized she felt when there were no boys around and she was seeing all these inspiring women doing inspiring things and that gave her the motivation to achieve herself and you know often with stereotypes there is a lot of kind of assumptions made about what men should be like and what women should be like and you know over the years I have seen a real change I've seen a real change in gender expectations because you know we've even got to the point where there are now kind of unisex loos or restrooms you know because men are becoming more like women and women are becoming more like men and that's okay but there was a time when gender roles were so divided and so clearly defined and if you didn't fit that gender role somehow you're a weirdo I don't think we live in times like that today but occasionally that gender divide does pop up as my guest in episode 60 describes and I think men have this thing about yes. like, wanting to feel useful and there's the whole it's such a stereotype in relationship that like if you want to keep your boyfriend happy just like give him something to do I really struggle with useful. that um I mean I really really struggle with that it, yeah but I've even gotten it you know someone offers to carry my bags up the stairs I'm like no no no, I've got it and you can see them <laughs> sort of huff off and I'm like well I don't have to let you carry my bags like and I, it might be any reason, and thank you for your offer of help, but actually I don't need it. And you see men just looking so dejected because you haven't let them be useful. And I'm like, well, I want to carry my own bags. Like, I go to the gym, I'm going to do it. I often have this debate with friends because I'm female and I really enjoy men treating me like a lady, you know, opening doors. Um, it's even amazing when a man stands up um, at the dinner table when I'm taking a visit to the restroom. You know, that kind of chivalry uh, is so wonderful to receive as a woman. Um, and yet we are living in an era where women want to be fiercely independent and do their own thing and then get annoyed if we're treated harshly or aggressively um by people of the opposite sex so it's a bit of a tricky subject but I have come to the conclusion that I like to be treated a certain way because I'm a woman and I do feel usually physically inferior to most men and I feel fragile and I feel dainty and I feel um, more vulnerable as a woman. And I do want men to be physically stronger and protecting and masculine. Um, in the conventional sense of the word and so you know this idea that women need men is a tricky one because you know if you want to be highly female I guess we do need men to a certain degree but at the same time we don't want to be we want to be in our power needing men, or at least I do. I want to be powerful as well as needing men. Um, I don't want to be subordinate needing men, and I think there is a big difference there. And um, I think somehow it's become a little bit unclear along the way, and so women have kind of slipped into this subordinate role um, in some cultures and so men have wanted to be more dominant and uh, I think you know the pendulum has swung too far in the wrong direction in those circumstances and actually women need to take back their divine feminine power but you know it is all about finding 
what works for you. And I think there are no hard and fast rules about what women should expect or what men should do or, you know, any of those things. I think it's really important to define what your expectations are and stick to them. And if they're not conventional, fine. But but you can make your own definition, as my guest in episode 67 points out. Like engineering is kind of seen like cars and planes mm-hmm. and all these right. things and kind of what you're talking about before, like boys are just given them. They're given toy right. cars and we're given this. And it's it's like, well, if you don't think that you're I think a lot of us kind of have struggled with this. Like I'm not interested in in aerospace. I would never work <laughs> in I don't want to work in the aerospace industry. And I think that's scary because it's like, well, what else do engineers do? Mm-hmm. And they actually do a bazillion and one other things, but it's just not the stereotype. So you are you don't like cars. You're like, oh, but I don't like engineering yeah. then. Yeah. But really, but, engineering is in probably almost everything else, whether yeah. it's like fashion or, mm-hmm. you know, everything. Yeah. I mean, I would like to say the point that I played with Barbies growing up. And yeah. I think the storytelling that like comes with like playing with dolls is like a big part of something that can go into like engineering as well. Because I think mm-hmm. you need to have a story around like what you're building and why you're building it to like motivate you. Yeah. And I think even like playing with like toys that aren't like cars or, or planes mm-hmm. and whatnot, it's like you kind of have to sometimes be even more creative and like build a house for your toys, for example. <laughs> like that's, yeah. there's like building and engineering in that too. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I think we like marginalize that for girls a lot of the yeah. time well they're not told to think it's like engineering, yeah right yeah. even though it probably my mom my mom always says that she had a cardboard box when she was a kid that she turned into a party like a i did house. that too yeah. right and that's yeah. what you said it's building but she would have never been like yeah that's engineering on a really tiny child scale you know what i love about the discussion with those mechanical engineering girls is that they didn't want to limit their perceptions of things they didn't want to restrict their view of engineering based on what everybody else assumed and I love that open-mindedness because they were aware of the stereotypes but they didn't want to be stuck in those stereotypes they wanted to explore they wanted to expand definitions and they put the effort in to truly defining what engineering means for them. And I think we have to do that with stereotypes. Rather than trying to squeeze our circular selves into a square box, how about finding out what shape you want to be, you know? And I think stereotypes are such an oversimplification. And as an oversimplification, you end up shutting yourself down. You end up limiting your view of the world and not really appreciating all that someone or something has to offer because of your blinkered views. My guest from episode 69 really explains her experience of that. Yes, the stereotype is still um, that it's a it's a man's world. And even though I was the uh, lead field engineer, so I had 12 direct reports, uh, field senior engineers reporting to me, and we had around 500 people on site with more than 27 different contractors doing different trades at, one t- at each one time. Um, I was kind of, it took a lot of time for people to get used to seeing me on site and uh, showing Mm -hmm. the the level of respect I expect um, from these people because, uh, yes, I've heard lots of comments. I've heard uh, lots of um, kind of not very nice comments, like to me, not very nice comments. Uh, So, yeah, I I do agree. And it's it's such a shame because, as I said, the, the work is not only... You don't, you, know, you don't need the massive muscles to do this work because the, the amount of work required to make this work happen requires lots of strategy, lots of thinking, logical thinking, lots of analytical reasoning, um, lots of um, engagement, lots of relationship building. Um, so it's, it's, and all these skills that women have in bucket loads so it's, uh, yeah, it's a shame that only few people are, are involved in such a field. I love that guest perspective on engineering because 
whenever you think, whenever you say the word engineering, it always conjures up this kind of grease monkey type of character with dirt under their fingernails and overalls. And, you know, what she points out is that engineering is so much more than that. And rather than trying to conform to what an engineer is supposed to be, her attitude is to celebrate the things that she can bring to the table that aren't really conventional. And there's a real confidence to that kind of perspective of hers, which is that, you know, I know I bring something to the table and it's X, Y and Z and that's unique to me. And I'm not trying to conform, but I do know that those skills are really important and I'm not going to condemn them because they may be seen as maybe softer skills or feminine traits. It's about being proud of who you are and rising above the stereotypes, not because you want to try and sort of prove that you're better, but just because you have an inner confidence of who you are as an individual So you're not trying to conform to anything or prove anyone right or wrong. You're just proud to exist as you are. As my guest in 73 sums up in one line. That that I see no reason other than the cultural stereotypes of sort of nerdiness why girls shouldn't be involved in this field. Having that inner confidence is the reason why women should really go forth with what they want to do with their lives, as my guest from episode 73 sums up. But a conversation that kept coming up over and over again, actually, was this idea that if you see it with your own eyes, you can be it. And what was a recurring theme on silence was this idea that girls that went to a single sex school were so much more confident and proud of who they are because they saw a variety of girls doing what they wanted to do and also doing the jobs that maybe would have been taken by a boy or you know would have been assigned to someone a bit more appropriate for the job and In listening to those guests, I really started to convert from being very much in favour of co-ed schools to actually realising the benefit of single-sex schools. My guest in episode 79 talks about her experiences of that. In that environment, there were no stereotypes. I had to do everything, you know, and and I was one of those girls who would love to, you know, who who would love to feel like a princess. So I would, you know, in in my COVID environment, I'd have, you know, I thought, you know, if you could smile, you could get your, you know, we had to do metallurgy and we had to do blacksmithing and all those really hard, very tough um, uh, courses in the first year, which really involved a lot of physical strength as well. And and I thought, oh my God, there's no easy way. I've got to do it. Yeah, the female child yeah, is not going to work. Everybody around me was in the same boat, <laughs> or some was. But but yeah, that that taught me that yeah, together we are a great force. Uh, we could do anything. Mm. So it's about sticking up for yourself, and it's about fighting those stereotypes by just being bold and brave about the person you want to be. And I think if you have that attitude of, you know what, this is me, take it or leave it. I'm going to be who I am and I'm proud of it. It's really the way to go when it comes to fighting the stereotypes. My guest from episode six absolutely nails that sentiment. I guess. It actually, I've actually come to be extremely proud that I am a woman in science. And that was mainly through my journey of finding and hearing from other women in science. And I've noticed that they are some of the most influential and inspiring women that I have met um, that are doing all these, they're kind of going above and beyond what uh, some of the men I've met do. And that's not saying, that's not like a sweeping statement of saying that men do less and women have to try more to get to the same 
level as men, but just the one that I've met are so amazing because hearing what they've had to overcome and then hearing how proud they are that they kept, like that they stuck to it and got through college and got through those classes where they had to deal with the stereotypes and got through those professors who were already stereotyping them. Um, so it's actually made me extremely proud to be a woman in science. And I think any woman that is in STEM should be proud that they've stuck with it and that they aren't letting I guess, feelings of men towards them or statements made by men or even statements made by other women affect them, that they're just sticking with their, sticking to their guns. That guest is so inspiring to me because she really just exudes strength and comfortability within her own skin. And when I was interviewing that particular guest, I was wondering where that confidence comes from. And in subsequent episodes, I've talked to women who have that similar level of strength and courage to be exactly who they are. And what was really common amongst those confident women is that they were raised with parents that really promoted and supported their children growing up to be exactly who they wanted to be this from episode 19. I definitely try to push my daughter into alternative everything, right? Like, whatever is on the boy's side, that's what you should be buying, right? Or like, you know, and and her perspective on this is that she, she's taken in all of this media, and she's uncomfortable going to the boy's side. She, She doesn't want to do that. She says, no, I can't, I can't buy that. Wait, why? Like you're, so she's falling into these kind of stereotypes just because of the, the way that she's been marketed to in the media, which is again, it's terrifying. I find that really scary. Yeah, I mean, you know, with your daughters in mind, or any other kind of little girls who are right at the start of choosing subjects at school and building a sense of identity, you know, what key messages would you give them? Yeah, I think that that. That is immensely important to craft those messages. And I think what I would say is that, well, for one thing, they can do anything. That anything is possible for real. I try really hard myself to talk to girls as, uh, you know, just the same as anyone, right? Like asking them what they're thinking and what are you feeling about this and validating their feelings and their emotions. Um, I think that what I see is that girls, just like I feel actually, they have a tendency to apologize for their opinions. So it's a matter of just saying your opinion is valid and I want to hear your thoughts. You know, your brain is amazing. I want to hear your thoughts. I want to hear what's in your head. I think it's really important for parents to encourage their children to stand up for themselves. I think it is a parent's job to teach their children how to be there for themselves. Um, And that requires having to face the stereotypes themselves as parents. Break the stereotypes down. Because I think, you know, we are constantly bombarded with messages that women should be a certain way and men should be a certain way and this is cool and that's trending. And it can be really overwhelming for young minds because all they want is to just be accepted and be part of something. And so parents should help their kids out by saying it's okay you know, it's okay to be you and really push that message hard. Because I think if you give too much weight to the stereotypes, it will have an impact and those stereotypes will affect you and will influence the choices you make and how far you're able to push yourself and how good you feel about yourself in your own skin. In episode 34, my guest talks about how her self-consciousness really influenced her as a result of stereotypes. If I knew the answer, like my hand would be up in the air. But as I became more aware of kind of like the stereotypes and I joined high school and I heard like people make comments like, 
well, I'm going to start a boys in STEM club or stuff like that. I became more self-conscious and um, like, especially in my um, calculus class, um, no one participates in the class, even when the answers are very obvious. So I started t saying the answers when I knew them. And I was, I'm so afraid of like being seen as a know-it-all and like people thinking that I'm like a teacher's pet because I've gotten that so many times and it's, it's really annoying. And it's, um, it's very disheartening when you hear that over and over again, when you're just trying to, to be yourself, because when I'm try trying to be assertive. Defying stereotypes is really, really hard. And it does take a lot of strength of character because, you know, it's a lonely road. Sometimes the reason why stereotypes exist is because they represent a majority perspective and so trying to be different from that stereotype means that you're often the odd one out or on your own and that can be really lonely this from episode 54 is recognizing that when you're going to be yourself that that may make others uncomfortable because of gender stereotypes that we still need to get over yes. um, great example um you know I remember my first review as a senior executive and it's around Robin review and this and that. And my peer and I had gone head to head in the last, in like the last board meeting on a specific topic. And I remember getting pretty assertive and being like, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do blah, 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 blah. And walking out of the room and my boss being like, you should probably tone it down. Like it's getting a little hectic in there. I'm like, okay, okay. Um, the, the next week, same topic came up. The gentleman next to me said the exact same thing and basically regurgitated my points and was lauded for his assertiveness and, and directness in nature. Said basically the same exact thing I did. I yeah. was told to tone it down. He yeah. was told that it was great. Mm. So again, that's going to change with time as more women go into the boardroom. It's yeah. not something that we can correct. We can alert, you know, and I did. I alerted my my boss at the time. I said, you know, I said the same thing last week. He told me to tone it down. Like they said it to you and you were all excited. I said, what is that? And he went, well, I'm just not used to hearing you get forceful. And I said, well, is it a problem or is it you're just not used to it? Oh, I never thought of it that way. So there's ways oh, to coach. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, but we're never going to solve that issue at this moment. Yeah. It's going to take us in that position. But what we do is, you know, as a good leader, any good leader will tell you, you will never change your team. You have to change around your team. So if I know that, that I'm going to be looked at as forceful or this or that or the mm. other thing, then I have to change my style to fit the situation to get my point across. And that's okay. We do that in, in leadership all the time. That's not a male or women thing. That's leadership. Right. You know, if you are going to be an effective leader and you are a type A personality and you're dealing with type C personalities, you better learn how to relate to a type C because they're never going to relate to a type A. Fighting stereotypes is hard and it takes time, but that guest is just so inspiring in learning how to be resilient when you are fighting those stereotypes because it's just not easy. My guest from episode 81 confirms this. Had so much to deal with at home life. Um, I took it out on people around me, you know, in school. Um, and this is what's happening. And it's so, so sad. But um, I think growing up like that, I had to find a lot of courage to just you know, step out of what people's stereotypes were of me um, and fight for what I wanted as well. It's hard to break stereotypes. You know, not only are you on your own, being different, not fitting the conventional perception, but you're going to get people that are almost jealous that you have that courage and that strength to be different. And so they're going to make your life tough. And what I love about my guest on episode 64 is that she kept going anyway, despite all the resistance from others. I, I'm a good communicator, as is not the stereotype for engineers. <laughs> um, 
and I get on well with people and I use that to my advantage. Um, so I know I kind of am aware of my own skill set and use that. So I think people can get really intimidated and this is men and women if you sound really technical and all of a sudden they don't understand mm. and it's scary because they feel inferior to you um I personally love that feeling <laughs> because I feel like yes I've got more to learn and why don't I know this I love that feeling but generally speaking people don't like it so I think I just kind of cater my my working way into not not making people feel that way Battling stereotypes is not just about battling relationships with people that you come across, but it's also battling age old traditions, cultural perceptions, generational thinking. I mean, it is so complex and multi layered. And we can't fight all these individual battles. What we can do is take a look at ourselves and how we deal with the effects of stereotyping and get strong from within. It's the same message over and over again. That's why this podcast is called Innovation because everything starts from inside of ourselves. That's where the strength lies and we've got absolutely everything we need to be the strongest, most resilient, best versions of ourselves as my guest in episode 66 talks about. But it was, um, I mean, it's a constant battle, to be honest, right? Because society and, you know, stereotypes and what is typical, you know, is all those things are constant, you know, they're constantly bombarding, you know, our thoughts, our impressions, they're constantly bombarding our experiences. Um, they're constantly, you know, trying to um, influence us to um to succumb to mm. what might be an easier path an easier route when you are able to develop that strength woo it is so empowering not caring about stereotypes being who you want to be without being influenced by the opinions of others oh that's exactly where i want to be And my guest in episode 66 continues on to say how she's got to that point of empowerment. Um, I didn't know of the challenges. I didn't know of the stereotypes. Um, I wasn't aware of um, all the expectations or lack of expectations in a way. Um, And I really was just powered by, you know, what I was interested in doing, Um, it also helped that I, I, I have a very supportive um, mother um, and, you know, I, I, I grew up seeing her do stuff. So, you know, not for once did I think, oh, I can do stuff. I can be what I want it to be. Screw the stereotypes. Screw what people think. Just be yourself, even if it is a little bit different. My guess from episode 78 is loud and proud about who she is. Um, a couple of them came up to me and started asking questions. And surprisingly, the mothers actually said, oh, you won't like that. Mm. That's not, that's not, you know, feminine. It's a little bit dirty. Mm. You won't, that's not for you. You're a bit too girly. Uh, and I was so shocked because, I mean, I, I think I had acrylics at the time. And I said, look at me. I've got long acrylic nails. I wear makeup. I mean, I'm not, not that it should be a stereotypical engineer, but I, I'm very much a believer in being, you know, whoever you want to be. You can be as typically masculine or feminine as you want there is if you like engineering and you like problem solving there's a role for you and I think a lot Mm. of women don't see that you never have to get dirty if you don't want to and equally you can get as dirty as you like make up your own rules be confident about who you are don't apologize stereotypes are narrow-minded they're limiting they're backward why get dragged down by a label that just doesn't fit anymore. You know, we're living in a day and an age where we're so able to put ourselves out there. Social media gives us the opportunity to be really proud of who we are. And I'm not saying that social media doesn't have its negative sides. People can put false facades of themselves up there, but it's also a place to get really, really honest. 
And I think those who are honest and accepting of who they are, who they truly, truly are, are really the most empowered people that I've ever met. I have no time for stereotypes. I've just been too unconventional in too many areas and often the minority in so many different fields. And stereotypes for me, they don't mean anything. But it's getting comfortable with who we are as individuals that I think is key because we can all have a blasé attitude towards people's perceptions and people's stereotypes. But having that inner strength is really what makes us the strongest, best versions of ourselves. And even if you are an oddball or one of very few, it's always important to find people that really believe in you and are part of your tribe people that really see who you are and appreciate who you are and are not just taking you on face value. To end, I'll leave you with a quote from episode 79, which pretty much sums it up. You know, I don't think any woman can come to work if she doesn't have the right support behind her. And Mm. the ones who are, are hats off to them, but it's a family that works together. And men are at an individual level, you can see some are doing more than the others and some mm-hmm. are far beyond that curve. Uh, yeah. but, that, but that change has to come. You know, um, if a man takes a parent to leave, it's not taken that well even in his organization. Yeah. So you, we have to, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's really a minefield to see. Um, it has to be done subtly. It has to be, it will take time. Um, but you know maybe our daughters are going to grow up feeling that uh, there was no stereotype Mm. and when we get to that stage where uh, we haven't been telling our sons that boys do this and girls don't do this and hopefully I think we are creating that world now where uh, we're getting very gender neutral I hope we can live in a world where stereotypes are less prominent and less dominant. But until then, take the time to really get to know yourself and feel accepting and loving towards the person that you truly believe you are. Thank you so much for listening this week. Please do subscribe to this podcast and maybe even rate and review the show if you can. I'd love to have your feedback about this episode and any others that you've listened to and maybe get your suggestions for future topics for this show. It's all about self-discovery and evolution on innovation, so if there are any issues which you feel are holding you back from living to your fullest potential, I'd love to delve into it and draw upon the wisdom and experiences of my amazing, inspiring guests from my previous podcast, Silence, where I spoke to 100 women about their lives as women in STEM. Be kind and loving to yourselves, and I wish you all a great week.